All right, Wednesday morning, draft eve, Birds 365. Um, well, there are a ton of scenarios that always come in on draft day, and we've got the team to figure out which ones are real, which ones can happen, which ones are far-fetched. Bob Brookover, NJ.com, back on the Eagles beat. And you know, Bob, the Eagles beat is a fun one because Howie Roseman has the phone burning up all the time, and he is – trying to make moves at all times. So let's get your initial thoughts on moving up and using a pick 50 or 53 to do so. Uh, does that sound like something that Howie Roseman would and should do tomorrow night? Uh, <laughs> the old phrase, I have, I feel strongly both ways uh, because, and here's why. So, and, and really it doesn't have anything to do with anything except it's really fascinating the Eagles have made the 53rd pick uh, three times in the 21st century. Their three guys are LaShawn McCoy, Miles Sanders, and Jalen Hurts. There have only been four Pro Bowlers in the 21st century, picked 53rd overall. The Eagles have picked three of the four. Uh, do you really want to give up that 53rd pick? Uh, I mean, so you should give up 50 then, Bob. The 50 you should, don't, don't even bother with 50. Which makes no logical sense. Yeah. <laughs> The 53rd <laughs> pick seems to have worked out better than the 22nd pick for them. Uh, yeah, that, that well, like that, that. yes, that was yeah. they moved up to get that one, and that was Andre Dillard, uh, which it worked out fine because then they moved up. They had moved up the year before to get Jordan Mulata, and everybody knew that he was going to be the next great left tackle for the Eagles. After everybody, <laughs> that, actually, Baldy and Ross Tucker were a ground floor on that. I All give right, those well. guys credit. So. Uh, or the former offensive lineman looked at Jordan Mylon and said, boy, oof. the traits <laughs> were there. He, he had the measurables of one Liberty place, and they said, yeah, yeah. we like that. Yeah. Uh, so, um, yeah, I don't think there's any way that Howie makes the 22nd overall pick. Uh, 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 some other research I did was he, he's, he's traded first-round trades 75% of the time in the 12 drafts he's made. He's been involved in first-round trades. Uh, not only that, in the history, in, in, in the 21st century, nobody's wanted the 22nd pick. That pick's been traded like 62% of the time. <laughs> yeah. right. So you factor in those two things, and you're like, there's no way. And then to me, uh, how is going to want the best of, and to me, I still say, either an offensive tackle or a cornerback. For me, I would go with after the cornerback uh, because, you know, part of the Jordan Melata thing is that Jeff Stoutland was a huge part of making him into what he is today. Uh, when you have Jeff Stoutland, you have somebody who, who is brilliant and molding guys, although he didn't do a great job with Andre Dillard, I guess. Uh, but um, you, you you have that. And I just think the bigger need is at cornerback. Uh, I think they're going to move up to get one of those guys. So that's, uh, that yeah. is separate from – that Howie has never taken a corner since 2010. No first round pick for Howie Roseman at that position. No, none. And well, the Eagles have only taken three in their history. Uh, and here, here's a reason, another reason to take one because the three, three they've taken have been pretty good. Lito was the last one. He was a he was a Pro Bowler. He, he was great the year they went to the Super Bowl. Uh, before that, it was Ben Smith, who was his trajectory was to be Georgia. A great What's that? Georgia, another Georgia, Georgia guy. Yeah, yeah. He, who knew yeah. even back then? Uh, but he was his trajectory has been a terrific player before he got hurt. Uh, and before that was Roy Nell Young, who who maybe should be in the Eagles Hall of Fame. Yeah, so. Roy Nell was a good player. Yeah. Um, yeah, but you know why? I and I don't blame Mike for bringing that up, but you know why I don't care about those kind of stats? The because they don't matter this year. <laughs> well, yeah, they don't matter this year, but. They've tried. They wanted to take Patrick Sertan, J.C. Oh, sure, Horn, yeah. and the DeMonte. They wanted to take Derek Stingley, but he went third overall, whatever he wants. So, I mean, they've been very interested in corners. Yeah. The board just hasn't so, broken they their all, Are they interested in corners if it's an, like an elite, elite, like a top yeah, 10 well, situation? Yeah, basically, Not so much thing. that second tier right, guy that, is what just, we're saying. And what John just said could absolutely happen again tomorrow. You know, they, they yeah. want Quinion Mitchell or Terry and Arnold, and so do so do the teams in front of them, and they're not yeah. willing to make that trade. Exactly. So. Pittsburgh evidently is trying to trade up uh, to get a corner. Minnesota, if they can't get the corner, I just mentioned in the opening thing, I, if they can't get the quarterback, and obviously they need the quarterback, but there's no guarantee they can go up and get them. Their second spot would be corner. 
and they're 11. So you, you're, you're not getting above them in a trade up. And all of a sudden, if it's Quinion Mitchell, which is the guy I've sort of bounced back to, Bob, he might not be there and he might be screwed. And, you know, they might take the offensive tackle and people will be saying they haven't taken it next year. They haven't taken a cornerback since Lido Shepard, which is factually true, but kind of meaningless. Yeah, I, yeah no, that, that, that's a great point. Yeah. Um, now, Isaiah Rogers, that doesn't ship things for you. The, the splash, he's back. Yeah, well, I, I don't know that splash. Isaiah Rogers, he hasn't played in a year for one thing. Yeah. Uh, you know, I don't know that he's some Eagles league. fans have talked themselves into they got Deion Sanders, bro. I don't right. know about uh, your social media, but he, mine is like this guy's phenomenal. He he was like a backup quarterback for a year. He, the guy yeah. that can't play is great, uh, you know. So, <laughs> always backup quarterback <laughs> right. situation. So, yeah, I mean, I now. think it's a good thing for them that there's another body that they can look at, and who knows how, you know, the other thing we don't know is can James Bradbury have a back bounce back year for the Eagles. Uh, he's been good. I mean, he, I think, uh, I think it was 2017, 18 was, he had a really not very good year and he bounced back nicely from that. Now he's, uh, he's obviously going to be older. He's in his thirties now, but you know, the guy's a pro, he knows how to play the position. So, well, I love James and I'm sure you love James from covering him with the giants and, and now with the Eagles, great guy, but I, I bottom line, Brookie, I don't think he's getting the opportunity if they draft a corner in the first round, then I think he's going to be a post June first cut. I'm yeah, sure they'll try to trade him, but I would, I would and I, I'm that. sad by that because I think he would. I've said this pretty consistently. I think he's going to have a bounce back season in Big Fangio's scheme if given the opportunity. But if you're not given the opportunity, it's kind of hard to have a bounce back season, right? But I, yeah. no, I'm, I'm with you 100. percent I mean, on, on all those things, you know what. <laughs> I, I go to the Sixers game the other night. Uh, those officials would have called in that Super Bowl to call that penalty against him. Uh, they would have called. Like, yeah, they would have called. The yeah, seconds. they would have called. They would have called the foul. Yeah. Uh, bringing up some bad memories. Don't don't get the Sixers fans started, Brookie. Because <laughs> you know, eh, complain rough, about officials. Rough, you yeah, know, you can also box out. Year. I'm just saying, teams get screwed by calls all the time. That doesn't mean you have to give up. That's all I'm saying. That's uh, all I'm saying. Again, the first beer. Yeah. <laughs> it, it it's a um, you know, we're uh, the eve of the draft and you start to hear all the stuff, but it feels, guys, do you feel the same way that I'm kind of feeling that corner almost feels like the fate accompli here? And it almost seems it's it's too obvious, right? Oh well, yeah. That well, the, the, I mean, the the other thing is you don't necessarily have to get Quinion Mitchell or Terry and Arnold. The, the, to me, one of the most fascinating guys in the first round is Cooper DeGene, uh, because I've seen him, you, you know, you, you, you look at different uh, evaluations of him. Pro Football Focus, for instance, has him rated as it's their best cornerback at number number eight, and number eight on their entire big board, um, you know. You go back, and I, I just before I came on, I looked at you know, I'm curious, what did Cooper DeGene do against Marvin Harrison? And they had a good game, and Marvin Harrison had seven catches for 62 yards. Uh, so you know, how good is he? He's a fascinating player because everybody talks about how he can play corner, you know, can absolutely play cornerback, uh, could also play safety, could play in the slot. Uh, so and th if a guy, if a guy like that is falling toward you, do you go up and get him? Uh, you know, they're. Nate Wiggins from Clemson is on that board. Uh, I'm, I'm, uh, oh, and, and Kool Aid McKinstry. Kool Aid McKinstry. Who, 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 who wouldn't love to have a guy named Kool Aid on your team? I just, I'd be excited just typing that in. Kool Aid. Yeah, the headlines write themselves for Kool Aid when <laughs> yeah. Eagles fans well, had a start chance to draft a guy named Ha Ha, and they passed on. They didn't get the opportunity. To no, do that, so they, they wanted to draft they, Ha Ha. He was, yeah, they yeah. had the chance that year, and they didn't end up getting him. So yeah. now you could possibly. Which, by uh, the way, that's another example. The Eagles never draft safeties in the first round. Well, they would have, but you know, Green Bay traded up. And they were stuck with Marcus Smith, rookie. And that's kind of what happens in the draft. I, I once got a nasty email because I wrote, ha ha, Clinton Diggs got hurt. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's pretty good. Um, boom, boom. Yeah. So and Cooper DeGene is an interesting guy where you said he could play corner and or safety. And it's, it would be interesting 
to see how the Eagles would view him with the notion of, John, as you just said, well, the perception is they don't draft safeties in the first round. So if they draft him, would they try to keep Bradbury and play him at safety? Or would this be a situation where we think Bradbury would be uh, a post-June 1st cut? You know, one of the one of the things I like, uh, I, I agree with John. Is I don't know about Cooper Jean. It, it's, it's a good question, but one of the things I like uh, about what if we go back to the Lido Shepherd era is Lido Shepherd. They drafted Lido Shepherd and and Sheldon Brown, and they said sit, watch, uh, and yeah. and did for two years. And when those two guys came in, you know, it, it, they had Troy Vincent and Bobby Taylor in front of them, and I'm not sure. Darius Slay and James Bradbury have had good careers. I'm not sure that those two. But, hey, you know what? Keep James Bradbury around for a year. The knowledge he's got. We already had that lecture. John was there for the uh, lecture we got from from Howie and and, uh, Nick about, hey, these guys are learning from the best. You know what? You don't have to bring these guys in and absolutely play. Now, I think if you do that with Mitchell and – uh, Arnold, you're probably going to have that June first cut. But if you draft Cooper Jean, hey, you know what? Let him let him roam around and play a little bit. Let him listen to James Bradbury and Darius Slay, uh, and, and learn some things about playing in the NFL. I, I don't hate that idea at all. And, and the Eagles have done that a lot with guys because they've been able to. Uh, a lot of teams, when you draft a guy in the first round, you absolutely need to plug and play. Yeah, um, yeah. And I think the I think. Um, trying we don't know what Vic Fangio would draw up for him but he was used in a multitude of ways at Iowa would Vic Fangio say I have a way that I could use him that's not corner or traditional safety I think that would be a complete wild card of seeing what he want how he would want to incorporate him into his version of the Fangio defense which he is the architect of right and I, I bet he has some plans for it if he did it yeah I'm, I'm, I'm sure of that yeah, I wouldn't worry about Vic utilizing players correctly. I think that was a big problem last season. I, I think that'll settle down uh, at least somewhat with Vic Fangio, but we'll see. Maybe we even get to talk to him someday, Brookie. Uh, maybe <laughs> maybe the coordinators. Yeah, so, my, my, I go back to my Giants days. They, they talked to like all three coordinators, the, the head coach, the, all three coordinators, and like eight players in one day. I was like, yeah, wow, yeah, that's that's pretty good haul. Yeah, that's a it's it, you're back in a different situation, different time to say the least. But uh, I don't even know if the Eagles are aware there's an event tomorrow at the Novacare Complex. <laughs> it's just sort of osmosis. We all just show up, and uh, <laughs> things will happen uh, uh, during the NFL draft. But I digress. Sorry, Eagles, if they're listening which sometimes they are. Um, when when you talk about, uh, I think there's a lot of groundswell of corner, the trade potential trade up. I saw a wild rumor from Jeremy Fowler this morning and Dan Graziano, who are very plugged in, that they might be looking at a wide receiver, which I'm sorry, I'm not buying. Even Brock Bowers, who I think is one of the best players in the draft, but I'm not buying that. Um if they end up and they just take the offensive lineman, how how shocked would Bob Brookover be by that? Yeah, I, I, I wouldn't shock because if you you no, go to the that's you, what you I want, mean. You want to you want to tie in the cornerback stat. I think they've drafted in that time where they haven't drafted a cornerback. They've drafted twenty three offensive and defensive linemen in the yeah. first round. So yeah. I mean that's that's their that's their mo. Uh, and you know it, I wouldn't be sh- either shocked or disappointed because. Uh, you know, the, the situation is there. They need a right guard. Um, it doesn't sound like they're really enamored with Tyler Stino. They took him the third round last year. Uh, Matt Hennessy is the other guy they brought in, a, a, a somewhat local guy. Um, and he went to Temple. Um, you know, so I wouldn't be shy. And, I, and the other thing, obviously, is that Lane Johnson's days are, are growing short. So, um, you know, it, it wouldn't be shocking. And, and for the right guy, you know, absolutely. And it's, and, you know, everything I've heard is this is a deep uh, drafted offensive tackle. Uh, you know, some of those guys uh, grade to be guards or centers uh, by, by some people. But, hey, if you can get a guard that can go play tackle, if you can get the next Sean Andrews who could have done it. if you, Yeah, have, and you know, Sean who, Andrews was a, was a great player. But I don't know if you guys saw this real quick, Mike, before you jump in. Paul Hanbo works for ESPN. 
Uh, yeah. Does a lot of good stats. Um, it, he, he went back over the past 20 drafts. So we're talking about two decades and judged it by players in the first round who got second contracts. Not a perfect system because you could still be a good player. Um, and he judged the hit or miss rates. Uh, uh, the only positions above water, so above 50% over two decades, are center, offensive tackle, and guard. Everything else is under 50% getting that second contract. Everything Crazy. else, only offensive line. So for Eagles fans that get upset, and it's not sexy when you take the offensive lineman, you got a better chance to get a long-term, meaningful player there than anywhere else. Wow. So what, what would what would you think if they just stayed at 22 and here's – a guy who only plays tackle, that's it, but much better potential or the guy who has versatility. Do you take the guy who only plays tackle and he stands on the sideline for potentially two years, or do you grab the guy who has positional versatility? Yeah, well, I think the guy who is the best tackle is going to be gone, for one thing, at 22. Okay. Um, so he's not going to be there, but – yeah, ideally you get the the guard who can play the tackle. Uh, but again, if if you if you get a guy who you think is absolutely going to be the next your right tackle, uh, and he has to watch for you know for for a year or two, uh, you know that's what they did with Andre Dillard. They, they, yeah. He wasn't he wasn't supposed to be plugged in and played. Uh, you know, a lot is a different story. But you know they weren't they weren't in a rush to get Andre Dillard on the field. They they wanted him to learn the position. So are are the, the do we feel like the Eagles are in the like you know the fans they want the guy twenty two or wherever to be on the field immediately to help this team is that not where teams Bob you've been around the Giants you've been around the Eagles do they not need this player to help out immediately Nolan Smith did not help out last year he was a first round pick we can get into him and how much he needs to help out but if they take a guy in the first round this year do they look at it and say if he's a corner and he doesn't get on the field because we have Bradbury and Slay, oh, well. If he's a tackle because we have Mylotta and Johnson, oh, well. Or do they need a player to help this team out? Well, uh, I, I might argue if you go back and look at 2022, they didn't – and it was shorter. They had a lot fewer guys drafted. But they, they didn't really need anybody from that draft class to really come in. And, you know, Jordan Davis was the first overall pick. He didn't play that major a role. Um, but last year they ended up needing guys – uh, Sydney Brown ended up having to play more. Carter, I think they knew was going to, was going to play more. Uh, but they, it wasn't like a draft where they had, you know, a bunch of guys who they thought were going to come in last year, but they ended up needing to. And maybe, uh, you know, even Khalid Ringo at the end of the season was was playing more, and they started playing Nolan Smith. Maybe that was part of the problem down the stretch is that they were relying too much on younger guys and guys who who weren't ready to to do things. You know, it might have been part of the problem, especially in the back end. Uh, so yeah, I I think it's fine. You go to your Giants point. I covered the Giants last year. Their first two picks were Deontay Banks and John Michael Schmitz. They both became starters. Uh, Schmitz was, did not have a good year. Uh, Banks had great confidence, but didn't have a great year. It was it was okay. Uh, now could they come, be, come back this year and be really good players? Yeah, but they weren't NFL. Just you know, plug them in, great stud players. Uh, but they but the Giants had no choice. They had to do it. On By the way, I, I love Deontay Banks, Brookie. Maybe it's because of that confidence. I, I think he's going to be a good player, but you bring up uh, an excellent point, especially in Philadelphia and New York's the same way. I don't care if it's Quinion Mitchell, Terion Arnold. They're going to struggle uh, as a rookie cornerback in the NFL against some of these receivers that they're going to be up against. And you're going to hear the groundswell. What do we draft this guy for? You, you mentioned Banks, who I think has got tremendous upside. Um, and it starts pretty quickly. I don't know if it's the age of social media, but people are really impatient. Uh, you can't think that way as the Eagles, but I think it's a factor, uh, especially in this scheme we were talking about, Baker a little bit. It is complicated. For a young player, 
A lot of zone coverage, a lot of different zones. You got to spin off after the snap. You got to communicate well. You got to pass guys off. There's going to be blown coverages. Does that make you pause and say, eh, maybe I'll, maybe I will go in a more safe spot? Yeah, no, because you know what, trial by fire is the only way to do it. Uh, <laughs> you know, the, the veteran guys are going <clears> to. <throat> Excuse me. The veteran guys are going to struggle doing it too. I mean, they 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 have to learn the system too. You know, but for the for the rookies, you know, you're going from algebra to advanced calculus. Uh, you know, it's it, and it ain't easy, and it doesn't matter that people don't understand. You're still going to hear it. You know, when you when things don't go right. But it, I'm going to go back to Deontay Banks. He was great at just yeah. I'm going to be good. Yeah. He, he has a way about him. He's like, you know, he, very short sentences. No, I'm going to be good. I'm going to be good. He had a bad game. That doesn't matter. I'm going to be good. <laughs> That's the way he was. So. I love that. That's the thought process you, you have to have as have a cornerback. You, know, yeah. sl- you, you know, it was well yeah. as Slay absolutely has it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yes. Well, if you could, Brookie, it, um, I think that's an interesting – you've been around the Giants and the Eagles, two NFC East teams – in covering them leading up to the draft, how the two organizations view this day. Yeah, well, the Giants uh, <laughs> uh, Giants fans have viewed this day as a disaster a lot of times. Uh, so the Giants, you know, the Giants are, it's the third year of the Joe Shane regime. Um, it, and, it, you know, if he doesn't have a great year, it could definitely be the last year for the Brian Dable Era. Um, I don't know if Joe Shane is on the same short leash. Uh, I'm sure he, you know, he, he needs to have some guys start to make an impact right now. And he's he's got he, he's got all kinds of issues going this year. Uh, and again, I think the, the point before is that the, the Eagles for have basically been able to say, hey, we don't have to rely too much on our rookies. We want to bring them in. You know, at times they have. And, you know, obviously, um, um Devontae Smith was a guy that came in and had to play right away. And at that point, who who was it that led the – Travis Fulgham, I think, led the team in receiving. So, yeah, it does happen. But the Giants seem like to consistently have had to rely on these first-round guys. And, you know, when that first-round guy is Kadarius Toney, uh-oh. Uh, uh-oh. And, you know, two years – just two years ago was uh, Evan Neal was a problem. And, you know, even um, Kayvon Thibodeau, he was – good as a rookie uh but he wasn't great you know he 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 had a learning curve uh you know and some people still aren't all that impressed by him even though he had a, a pretty good year sack wise last year you know it, it takes time to john's point earlier that you don't just come in this league the, the outliers of the guys who come in this league are are, are great uh, but it, it also bob shows you know i think one of the differences between the eagles and a lot of organizations as you just said like the giants are in a situation where they almost are afraid to make a mistake on draft day. And Howie has such, you know, um, uh, Howie can do whatever he, he wants. Can what he, I he talk can make, about it all the time. He has it's the a luxury. Freedom. Yeah, he has yeah. the freedom to make mistakes where, like, you're kind of in, implying that the Giants are in a position where they need to get this right. And that's how these two organizations in the NFC East operate differently, where one has the freedom of possibly making a mistake, where the other is, this is a tense moment for them. Oh, absolutely! Absolutely. I mean, now I'm I'm fascinated by this Giants draft because they end up back at six, which is where they got Daniel Jones in a draft that's deep in quarterback at quarterback that which they need. Um, but you, to to me, they 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 should simplify the Giants should simplify things and just say, hey, you know what? We're either we're going to sit at six. We're going to either take the quarterback if he's he that we want or we we like if we have three of them with one of the three. Is there? We're going to take him. If not, we're going to take one of the stud receivers because Lord knows they need a stud receiver as well. And then you let Daniel Jones play for a year, and you know you you just had all the confidence in the world on a year ago. So bring him back, and if it doesn't work, then you're you're up there. Obviously, you you don't necessarily have a great quarterback draft again next year. But you know you know what? It, either way, you're going to get your look at Daniel Jones, and you're going to get your stud receiver. Well, and it feels like, you know, with the Eagles, Howie, it's offensive line, edge rushers. That's their sweet spot. A team like the Giants, they don't know who they are yet in, in, in what they're, you know, and that's, I think, another thing that makes this day interesting is some teams stick to their plan. The Eagles, one of them, and that's why 
the the corner talk is very interesting yeah. because they don't go well, that it's way. No, that by time. the way, with the Giants, Brookie, it's no coincidence. For many many years, they were had consistency in the front office. You know, Jerry Reese and 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 you know when they shifted away from Jerry, it's been a shit show. I can curse on YouTube. It's been a, awful. a revolving door, yeah, as well. It, it's been awful, and to me, other teams don't watch these teams that have long term consistency. Everybody calls the NFL a copycat league. It is, but they often don't copy the right things. And when you have GMs GMing for their job or coaches coaching for their job, it generally isn't going to work that well, which is why I'm concerned with Nick Sirianni from the coaching perspective this year. But we'll see how that shakes out. Uh, back to the draft a little bit, Brookie, with the Eagles and – you know, it takes two to tango. I think it's circling down that the Eagles want to trade up, but that doesn't mean you can trade up. If you're forced to stay at 22, would you like to trade back? If you can't get up, would you like to trade back? Yeah, I mean, I, obviously it depends on what, what a team's offering and what you think you can still get. I mean, how far do you want to move back? If I could – if I – if I'm Howie Roseman and I can trade back to either early second round or late first round and also get a third round pick, uh, you know, if the guy I absolutely love isn't there, um, you know, yeah, I, I would definitely consider that, especially, you know, now you look at, okay, you're going to get, you're going to essentially get four players in the top 50 of this draft. If you trade back, say, let's use 32, they tr trade back to 32, they get a third round pick. So now you got 32, 50, 53, and uh, 80, whatever, uh, 85, whatever the number is. Uh, so you get three three players in the top 100, you know, or four players, I mean, I'm sorry. See, so this is why I'm not. Yeah, four, four, four in the top 100, <laughs> yeah. Um, which, yeah, I to me, and, and you know, from everybody I've talked to, you, you have those levels. There's probably seven, eight blue chippers. There's probably 18, 19 real first rounders, whatever you want to describe them. And then you're sitting at 22 and you're not getting one of those players. You can probably get a similar player at 30, 31. I start thinking about seriously trading down if I can't trade up. But that's not it. You know, you need somebody to want to come up to 22 and they're going, why do I want to come to? So it works both ways. But just from a, a philosophy standpoint, if I can't trade up, yeah, I'd like to trade down because you're going to get a very similar player at 22 or 30, say, I think. Yeah. Well, the conclusion I came to looking at the 22nd overall pick was nobody wants it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's the problem. Exactly. Yeah. yeah and, and and the other, you know, you talk about uh, is there a player that at 22, you know, we talked about the year where the Eagles had six players on their board and they, they were all there and then somebody jumped over top of them. Are they do they have a bunch of guys that they say at 22 we're happy with this guy this guy this guy when they're there or is that a spot where they don't think that there's anybody so in other words the guy they want they're gonna have to move up to get yeah I mean I I think if you sit at 22 there's gonna be somebody that they they like well enough to take uh but just given how he's history he he's chomping at, I I think he's chomping at the bit to move up and you know again doesn't mean it, not going to. And before I go on, I don't want to entirely pick on the 22nd pick, but I do want to bring back some, some well, Justin Jefferson was 22. <laughs> where I was going. Yeah. The exact, the exact yeah. history is of course, number 21 was Jalen Rager. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, the, the other great 22 pick was Demarius Thomas. He was, yeah, he, that's he was, pretty good too. He, he so, was a great 22 pick. You so. can get a very good player. If things shake out uh, well, yeah. But obviously, the more the farther you go, it becomes a little bit more difficult. At Brook OB, make sure you follow Bob on X, uh, Twitter, NJ.com does a tremendous job uh, back covering the Eagles. Uh, Going to be an exciting draft. And how he said himself, Brookie, it's not, I like the trades. He <laughs> said it himself. He said, <laughs> well, he, you said know, it. Who he, said, he said it in that weird voice to his. I like yeah. trades. <laughs> Who would it, yeah. man? 
Yeah. Uh, by the he way, was so back, he, he and Nick were back to their jovial selves. They look so miserable after the season, the season ending press conference. They looked like they hadn't slept in about a month. Big mm. bags. That was depressed. exactly how they should have looked. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. That how they looked. It, it would look like Jeffrey Lurie scolded them, slapped <laughs> their hands out of the cookie jar. And now they were back to themselves, just <laughs> glorious and joking and, and buddy buddy. Yeah, yeah, it was good well, to see. Good to see that. That's the way they should have felt because that's the way the entire Delaware Valley felt. Well, Bob, it'll all happen tomorrow. We'll find out who the pick is. And we'll uh, see your reaction, NJ.com, covering the Eagles as they draft 22, but most likely not tomorrow night, says Bob Brookover. Thanks, Brookie. All right. Thanks, guys. All thanks, right. Uh, Bob uh, has a great article about uh, the 53rd pick in, in which the Eagles, that's some inside information. or well, not inside information. It's open yeah. to everybody. But you have to do a little dig in there. Feeling. Yeah. Um, Who's the best? Uh, so of the trade three? the 50. That's what that tells me. Trade 53. the 50. 53 is the pick. Yeah, you're saying trade the 50. Miles Sanders, LaShawn McCoy, and Jalen Hurts Jalen were all Hurts. 53. Wow. What did, are the percentage uh, chances to get 53 that many times and hit it? Yeah. Um, not good. You know, the percentages I just mentioned in, in the first round are under 50% for that second contract for every single position except offensive line. So you know, obviously, as you get to the second round, it's not an exact science. And, you know, people don't like to admit it. And and Miles, by the way, Miles and Jalen, that was back to back. So how weird is it to you get the 53rd pick? I think Miles was 2019. Jalen was 2020. Um, they had the 53rd pick back to back. Um, and they hit on it both times. And then if you go back to the 2019 draft, they had 57 as well. And that turned out to be J.J. Ortega Whiteside. So, you know, it's not an exact science. Let's put yeah. it that way. Um, and people still cringe over that because D.J. Metcalf was on the board. But as I said, and I just wrote about that on Sports Illustrated, he was off the Eagles board because of the neck injury. Um, he had yeah. fusion surgery. Um and they weren't going to consider him until day three, but people still bring it up, you know, because he's worked out. All right, to say so the least. We've got uh, a full another fresh hour coming up. Uh, Bob Groats is going to join us uh, at about nine twenty. So stick around for Bob's thoughts on the draft. Um, you know, there's so many scenarios every year. You get to the end, and it's like this, 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 this could happen. Yes, it all could happen. But which is the most likely scenario. I know, John, you have a couple of uh, trade-up options in your mind as well. And, uh, of course, pick 22, as Bob Brookover just said, doesn't look likely for the Birds. So we'll get into all the scenarios. And if you have a scenario, because to me, uh, I'm interested to get a kind of a unscientific poll of the viewers. Would you rather draft a player and not know what you're getting or trade for somebody and know what you're getting? I'm in that boat. If you told me I'm trading 22 to get an actual player who has played and is good, give me the player. I'll give up my 22nd pick. So you guys can chime in on that as well as we give you another hour coming up next on Birds 365.